Hey everybody, thanks for coming to my channel. My name is Chris and in this video I wanted to talk about some of my favorite things that I discovered or used in the month of April. So these are things that range from uh, products, books, apps, or YouTube channels that I've watched just to pass the time through the pandemic. Very Texan. So I am by no means the first person to do this type of video. I actually got this idea from another YouTuber, uh, Ali Abdal. And uh, I thought it was a good idea just to create sort of a series where you just share stuff that's valuable to you or stuff that you've appreciated and share it with other people in case they might find a similar interest. So I put these products in two different buckets uh, and I timestamped them below. Uh, but this month I wanted to talk about two things that I found myself doing a lot while I'm at home. And that's uh, interacting with tech and then also cooking which is, might be tech related, but uh, you'll see if you go to that section. So without any further ado, without a further ado, let's just get into it. The first thing I wanna talk about is my Nintendo Switch. Um, so this had been neglected for a while just because I was busy with work and travel. Uh, but now that we're home, uh, my wife and I have found ourselves playing this a lot more. And we also found out that a lot of our coworkers also have a Nintendo Switch. So around these times, we'll be done with work, we'll have dinner, hang out for a little bit, and then we'll find ourselves playing things like Mario Kart, Mario Party, uh, just playing games online with friends while we fire up a, a FaceTime or a Zoom call or whatever. If you can get your hands on one, because I know they've been pretty hard to come by, um, and you're able to buy one, I would definitely recommend it. The second item I want to talk about is a smart assistant. Uh, whether or not that's the Amazon Echo or the Google Home, um, a lot of us are finding ourselves at home and it's really nice to have either one of these assistants just to do some basic tasks. Um, if you want to listen to music, you can fire up uh, Spotify, or Apple Music uh, if you have an Amazon Echo. Or... And one of the main ways that we use our smart assistants here, and I say smart assistant because we do use both Google Home and uh, Amazon Echoes, uh, just because that's, yeah. I haven't really found a good answer for that, but we use both. But if we do want to listen to music, either in the kitchen or in the bedroom or in the living room, I find it a lot easier just to tell the smart assistants what we want to listen to. Because uh, oftentimes, if I want to control that through my phone, I might find myself either getting distracted, going onto social media, or just doing other things whenever my, my main intent was to just to play a song. So it makes it really seamless uh, to play music, anything like that. If you want to listen to news or uh, get some updates like that, I have a routine uh, that I use every morning where it just tells me the latest news and that's it. I don't have to scroll through social media. I don't have to go online or read a ton of articles. It's really just something brief that keeps me informed and it's touchless. I just have to ask for what I want and either smart assistant will give it to me. Home pods are also an option. I've never used one before, so I can't really talk to that experience, but um, they also exist. Uh, a lot of people ask me whether or not they should go Google Assistant or Alexa. Um, like I said, I use both. But um, one thing that I did notice from like a music streaming perspective is that the Amazon Echo does allow you to uh, stream Apple Music, whereas the Google Home doesn't. So if you're somebody who uses Apple Music as your streaming service and you don't want to buy a HomePod, then the Amazon Echo is probably going to be a good choice for you. The next thing I wanted to talk about is my standing desk. And this is one of the purchases that I have regretted buying the least, if that makes sense. I just, I love the standing desk. Uh, the desk that I have is a Spotsy Spot standing desk. And what I did was I bought the motorized LED separately. And then I put my own tabletop, which I just got a basic one from Ikea. And this allows me to sit and stand throughout the day. So I really appreciate this. I actually reviewed it. It was one of the first reviews that hit my channel. So I'll link to that uh, either in the cards or in the description. Um, but I found that it was one of the more budget-friendly options as opposed to some of these more expensive options that you might see other YouTubers uh, reviewing. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, I'll leave a link down below. And yeah, I really appreciate this desk. The last two pieces of tech I wanted to talk about are actually apps. So the first one is the privacy app. It's an app that lets you create virtual debit card numbers that you can set certain limits to. So you can do it to where you can only use it for certain merchants, you can add dollar amount limits, 
a really flexible card that helps you keep your uh, online shopping private and can really come in handy in times like these where a lot of companies are offering free trials. Let's say uh, a service is offering a free trial for 30 days where it's free, but you have to enter a credit card number. Uh, you can enter, you can create a virtual debit card for that specific service, set the transaction limit to $1, $5, and in the event that you forget to cancel that subscription, uh, the transaction's going to fail because you set that $5 limit. So I think it's really handy, especially since all of these companies are offering these types of free trials. But I also plan on using uh, this service for any sorts of recurring subscription charges, just so that uh, I don't get overcharged in the event that fees rise or something like that happens. And the second app that I want to talk about is YNAB, or You Need a Budget. So I've actually been using this app since February, um, but it's really paid off in April uh, because it's helped me pay down my student loans. So on April 15th, I was able to make the final payment on my student loans, and I'm pretty confident to say that I probably couldn't have done it without YNAB. Uh, it's a budgeting app, uh, not like Mint, it's unlike any other budgeting apps, it really teaches a methodology of making sure your money has a job and just changing that mindset really helped me uh, get into a better habit of knowing where my money's going and I was able to show that because I was able to pay down a large portion of my student loans uh, within a few months. So the reason I like YNAB a little bit better than things like Mint is that Mint is more after the fact. Yes, Mint helps you categorize your transactions, but uh, Mint helps you do that after it happens. With YNAB, it helps you set budgets for different categories and it helps you be a little bit more proactive with your spending. So I like that aspect of it. Um, it can be a little bit more manual, but I'm always down to create a, something that's a little bit more manual if it helps me do things like pay off debt faster. So if this is something you're interested in or you want to get a better hold of your finances, YNAB does offer a 34-day free trial. Uh, and if you use the referral link that I have below, uh, you'll get your first month for free. So definitely, I can't recommend it enough. It's really been life-changing for, for me. And it's not something that I hesitate recommending to other people if you're really intentional about getting your finances in order. So now let's move on to cooking. And I want to highlight one product that's been really useful uh, as we stay at home and I think I would consider it a tech product as well and that's the Instant Pot. We use it to make chili, pulled chicken, pulled beef, steamed veggies, all of these different types of meals that either uh, take a lot of time or they just make a large mess whenever you're just doing it uh, regularly. So being able to put a whole bunch of stuff into the Instant Pot, turn it on, just let it do this thing has been uh, really time saving and it's really been very convenient when it comes down to the amount of food we can make and just how much time we save from having to clean. So we have the six quart instant pot and it's perfect for my wife and I. Whenever we're making meals, it makes just enough so that we can have a full meal at dinner and then maybe some leftovers for lunch. And whenever we have friends coming over, it's perfect for making things like chili or large meals like that that we're gonna share or uh, put on the countertop for people to feed themselves. So really a big fan of the instant pot. If you could pick one up, I would definitely recommend it. One last item I wanted to touch on, this is kind of cheating because I've only had it for about a week now, but that's the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard. Um, only been using it for a week. I posted a video of my first impressions uh, last week, and I plan on doing uh, some more videos on this, comparing it to the Smartfolio keyboard, uh, but also a deeper dive as to how I've been using it and whether or not it has the potential to replace my computer. Uh, so deeper review coming down, but I do have it. I do love it. Um, yeah, definitely one of my favorite things that I've gotten in April. So I'll end the April favorites video there. I'll try to make this as consistent as possible just so that I can share new things that, uh, that I'm using and I think might be interesting for you guys. If there's anything that you discovered in April or something that you want to share, feel free to leave that in the comments down below. I'm really interested to see either the apps, the books, the podcasts, really anything that you found interesting as, uh, as you've stayed at home. Just leave it in the comments down below. I'll be more than happy to try them out and 
and see what it's about. Alright, thanks for watching. I'm gonna go edit this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.